हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक If I want to look at data for all 30 teams, I can probably copy this, paste it here, and remove this part, and just have T box and O box. So when you run this, you'll notice now we have 30 rows of data, and when we click here, so you can see all those 15 columns are available for all 30 NBA teams. Uh, if you want to see which team had the highest offensive effective field goals, which is F1 dot off. So if you click there, so now this is in ascending order. If you click again, it gives you numbers in descending order of this column. So no wonder Warriors had the highest offensive effective field goal percentage. If you want to look at uh, which team had highest turnovers per position, you can click on F2. You may have to click once more to make it descending. So you can see seven sixes had a lot of turnovers during the regular season. If you want to look at uh, maximum free throws, click there one more time and then you have descending order. So Houston Rockets had a lot of free throws. So I can close this out, although the data stays here. So I can use this FF where I have 30 rows of data and 15 columns to do some more analysis. I'm going to do correlations. So the function I will use is correlation plot, C-O-R-R, -R, and we'll plot correlation, so C-O-R, and we have to supply data, which is F-F. But in F-F, first column we do not want because that's name of the teams. So to remove that, I can simply say this square bracket and minus one means I don't want first column because if you go back, first column is team and that's a text data. So we cannot calculate correlation coefficients based on text data. So we don't need that column. So if you run this, so it says uh, this function is not available. To use this function, I need a library. So let me go back and add one more library, which is called CORR plot. Run this library. When we go back and run line 25, it gives me a plot for all the correlations between these variables. We can customize this by putting a comma here. And I'm going to hit enter so that we have more organized look. So method, I would say number. So you see numbers. So we have all possible combination of the variables and their correlation coefficients. So for example, F1 off versus POSS dot off. So that number is here. So that correlation is very low. But the problem is those numbers repeat. Like we have numbers in the lower triangle and we have mirror image in the upper triangle. So we don't need both. So I'm going to say comma and type equal. So this will give us only the upper triangle. Now, especially four factors, F1, F2, F3, F4, if you only look at this part, you will see that most of the correlations are very, very low. Now, if you pick up a number, for example, 0.38, this number, which is a correlation coefficient between F1 off and F4 off. So what does this 0.38 mean? It means that there is a 0.38 correlation coefficient between offensive effective field goals, which is F1 dot off, and offensive free throw rate, which is F4 dot off, which also means the teams that are good at offensive effective field goals also tend to have high free throw rate. So we can interpret like other numbers similarly, but the overall picture that we have here is most of the values are quite low. So correlations between these four factors are really very low. Now let's look at what makes a team succeed. So what are the variables that have big impact on a team getting more wins? So in a regular season, we have 82 games. Some teams, they win a lot of games and some teams win very few games. What is the biggest differentiator? So for that, I'm going to do some extra calculations. So we'll create this EFG, Effective Field Goal 
underscore dev like deviations and what we are going to store here is from this ff data so i'm going to type ff and dollar sign and then f1 offense so i'm going to select f1 offense minus again ff dollar sign will help us pick up f1 defense and we store that number in efg underscore dev so here i am storing difference between effective field goals when the team is doing offense versus effective field goals of their opponents to do better a team should have this as a positive number similarly we can create to for turnover underscore dev and this time i am going to say ff dollar sign f2 which includes turnover information but higher turnovers are bad so i will put f2 def first of their opponents and then minus ff dollar sign f2 for offense so that a positive number is good and then rebounding so ff dollar sign f3 so here we'll do offense first and then defense so i'm going to run this line and then free throws so this information is in f4 so again offense first and then defense so minus defense so we have created these uh, four objects and we'll use them as an independent variable so we'll try to use them to make predictions about a team's win now for wins we can get that information from t box so in that data if you put a dollar sign and start typing like w so this is uppercase so i'm going to select this and hit run so wins contains wins for each team so i'm going to combine all these and store this in data and we'll use data dot frame format which is like excel rows and columns so first column will be wins second will be efg underscore dev next column i am going to put turnovers dev and then we have rb rebounds and finally free throws so when i run this you'll notice that in the third window this data appears and it has all those columns for the 30 teams so now if we plot correlations let me copy this here so we'll use that but instead of ff we are going to use data that we just now created so wins versus all the variables most of the values are quite low the highest value is when we have effective field goal deviations this is a positive number and when these numbers grow higher a team ends up winning more games so when effective field goal between offense and defense so when that difference is high that leads to a lot of wins so that's the single most important factor and then you have the last one which is uh, free throws so that also contributes a lot to wins so now we can create a multiple linear regression model and see exact contribution of each variable so i will store results of this in model and the function we use is called lm for linear model and we are creating a model where the response is wins so i'm going to use wins and then you have this curly symbol which is just below the escape button on your keyboard it's called tilde and when you put a dot dot means wins versus all other variables in the data set so all other variables means all these one two three four variables and then we put a comma and say what is the data so i have named my data as data so we'll simply type data so when we run this immediately it creates a model and if you do summary model and run it will give us regression analysis so one of the numbers is r square 0.8633 which means 86.33 percent of the variability in wins is because of this model these four variables contribute about 86 percent to the wins 
Now, which one is the most important variable? So, if you look at these stars, you have effective field goals underscore DEV that has three stars and the p-value it is always smaller the better so smaller the value which means it's uh, highly statistically significant so compared to to underscore dev you can see efg has a very small number so 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 10 and the coefficient is uh, 3.9 so this is the slope now what does this uh, 3.9 mean a 1% improvement in EFG underscore DEV is worth 3.93 wins. Similarly, the slope for TO or turnovers is 3.02. So, the interpretation is that a 1 unit improvement in TO underscore DEV. So, difference between turnover when defending minus the turnover when you are doing the offense. So, 1 unit improvement in TO underscore DEV is worth 3.02 wins. So, this is not statistically significant, but last one is. So, the meaning of this number or the slope is a one unit improvement in FT underscore DEV is worth 0.98 wins or approximately one win. So, you can see using 2017 2018 data we can carry out uh, so much of analysis and get insights into a team's performance with the help of some graphs and charts and also statistical analysis in the form of multiple linear regression. So thanks for joining. I will see you soon.